guys, welcome back to my channel. So I don't know if you guys can still remember me. Hello? <laughs> it's been a really long time, like two or three months since my last video, so... Okay, so today I actually have time to film a video, so I'm just gonna do a mini review on some of the products that I've been using like throughout a couple weeks now, and I have like a lot of, you know, things to talk about, so let's just, let's go. Let's get started with this Etude House Dear My Glass Tinting, Tinting. That is such a tongue twister. Dear My Glass Tinting Lips Talk. And I'm in the shade BR402, and I'll just write everything in the description box so it's easier for you guys to read in case you don't understand what I'm saying, you know? So this is actually a quite cool concept because you have to buy, like, the, um, the case as well, so it's like two separate things that you have to buy. So yeah, I just got this packaging in Hit and Pat, and it's basically like a nude color, so that's why I got it. Like, I don't even know what Pit and Pat means. What does that mean? I don't know. So yeah, I just got it because of the nude packaging. And this is basically like a tinted lip balm. And this is kind of like a more darker... Do you hear that motorcycle? Why? Why now? So out of all of the colors that they have, they have like a lot of colors actually. And this is a little bit of a darkish kind of reddish color. Although it applies like pretty vibrant red, so keep that in mind. This is a very, very pigmented pigmented tinted lip balm like I swear you guys need to make sure that your lips are smooth no cracks in them because if there are cracks on your lips and it's dry it will definitely accentuate every dry patch on your lips so make sure that you exploit before you use this and I would recommend like when you apply it on don't do like the lipstick motion just pat it on your lips like that on the center of your lips and use your finger to blend it out and that would just make the application look the I can't talk. That would make the application a lot easier and for me and my personal like liking it looks a little bit better than just like fully red lip, you know? But I mean for the price, it wasn't that expensive as well and it's very pigmented so I mean if you guys are looking for a nice tinted lip balm, I would totally recommend you go check the Etude one out. And there's like a lot of like packaging styles that you guys can like pick from so it's quite fun I guess. Time consuming but pretty cool. And I also want to talk about the Dior Lip Tattoo Longwear Colored Tint. And this one is in the shade 351. It doesn't have a name, but... Oh, it has a name. The shade 351 Natural Nude. And this is like the most nude color. Well, not the most nude, but the most like forgiving pinkish nude, you know? On my lips, it looked legit red and pigmented. It's actually like what I have on right now. And it is definitely pigmented and the color will definitely like... Be vibrant but to be honest i was quite disappointed by this because it does not last a long time on my lips i don't know why maybe because like i drink a lot and i eat a lot but like throughout the day like a couple hours it will already disappear so i have to like reapply it and this can get a little bit drying because it is just like a lip tint and it's not moisturizing on my lips at all so I don't know, it's like I don't really gravitate towards it a lot. Like for me, I would totally prefer the Dior Lip Glow Reviver Balm, which is like this one. And it's basically like a lip balm, a tinted lip balm, which I feel like does not accentuate the lines on my lips and is a lot more moisturizing than the tint, even though, you know, tint is less moisture but you know there are some tints that are moisturizing so i was a little bit disappointed by this but if you guys are looking for a nice moisturizing tinted you know for your lips i would prefer you go for the lip glow revolver balm i mean and they're like the same price and you get like two in one like both moisturizing and the color so yeah i would totally recommend this one along more than this one however if you guys prefer a more like vibrant tinted color and you guys don't mind putting a lip balm afterwards then this is a pretty good option as well but I mean for the price there are other options out there as well so I wouldn't say that this is a must-have item you know I also got the Dior Dream Skin Perfect Skin Perfect Skin Cushion what? and I'm in the shade 10 of course probably the lightest shade that they have because I'm pale this is the one where they infuse some of their skincare inside this, so that's why I bought it. But to be honest, I think I'm getting kind of like an allergic reaction to it. Like, I'm not sure if it's this product that I'm using, but I get like small bumps. So I'm kind of scared to use it again, but I don't even, I don't really know if this is causing that. So I'm probably going to have to try it again and see if it is actually this. This one has SPF 50, PA++++, so that's a good thing, especially when you're living in Thailand and the heat is like pouring down on your skin. 
But to be honest, I'm like quite disappointed by this because you don't get coverage at all. And I'm like, my skin is not that bad, but you can kind of like see some dark spots and it doesn't even cover that. Like, I feel like I would rather use my NARS Sheer Glow a lot more. It's a lot thicker, but it doesn't feel heavy on my skin and it gives way better coverage than this one. So I'm like pretty disappointed by it and I haven't been gravitating towards it much. So, and it was pricey, so. Why do they do this to me? The next product I want to talk about is the Cover FX Enhancer Drops and I thought I would love this, like this would be my like my holy grail, but it, it's not. I, I wouldn't say it is a bad product, but it is an okay product, like you don't need to run and get it, you know what I mean? It does an okay job, but I feel like it looks a lot better under your foundation, but it doesn't really like shine through, so for the price of almost 2,000 baht, it's like it's not a must-have item and you don't have to like be spending so much money on this. And over foundation, it kind of dries really quickly and it's like really hard to blend. Like you, it's possible for you to get like one line like that, like a block of line here and it doesn't look that pretty. So. Yeah, this is in the shade Halo and it is really, really holographic. Like it's really, really pretty like on your hands and stuff. But once you apply it on your face, it kind of can give like a kind of Tin Man effect and it's a little bit like too much even though I'm like I love highlighter so much I wish I bought like the more natural looking highlighter but I bought this one so that's my, that's my fault so it's not like the best product it's not the worst but it's an okay product but you guys don't have to go run and buy it the first thing I got is the Dior brow pencil and this is just like the one where it's like the turn in and it's like a really small pointed one. Oh my god, just sneezed. This in the color to universal dark brown and I don't feel like it's dark enough for me. Like I have I just dyed my hair black so I love it when my brows are super dark. Like I don't know if it's just me but I, I just love dark brows. Like I wish I got the black one but whatever. Whatever. I also got the NYX micro brow pencil in the shade black obviously. Every time I tell the counter lady like I want black, they're always like, you should go for like a darker brown so it will look natural and I'm like, no, just give me the black one. I want a black one. And guys, these are both the same thing. If you're thinking of splurging 1k on the DR one, just go for the next one. It's like half of the price and it's basically the same thing. And to be honest, I kind of prefer the next one a lot more. I don't know if it's because it's black, but yeah, I've been gravitating towards the next one way more than the DR one. so. I mean, that must say something. So yeah, I totally, totally recommend the NYX one. And this has beat my L'Oreal Brow Artist. So that says a lot because I've been using the L'Oreal one for many, many years. So this one just beats it. So my new favorite brow product. I also got the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Gel. And this is just the clear one. Nothing really interesting. I wouldn't say that this is a must-have just for me because my brows are not bushy at all like I have like a lot of hairs like my hair grows really long but my eyebrows are really really thin so there's really nothing much to keep in place you know although my brows do stay in place like around the ends of them but if you guys have bushier brows in the middle you guys might appreciate this product a little bit more but it definitely keeps your brows in place like for me it's not really worth it because I don't really have bushy brows in the middle to keep it like, you know, standing up. Like, you know what I mean? For people who have bushier eyebrows and need to tame their brows a lot more, I think you would appreciate this a lot more, but I would recommend it for people who have bushier brows. But I mean, for me, it doesn't really do anything. Just like, it just keeps the ends of my brows in place. So I don't know if I would be spending like 900 baht or something like that on something just to keep that in place. So do you guys know what I mean? Like. It's different for different people, so if you guys have bushier brows, it's okay. It's It would be worth it, but like for me personally, I can find like Maybelline or L'Oreal dupes, you know? I got the NYX Dewy Finish Spray, Setting Spray, and a lot of people say that this is a dupe for the MAC Fix Plus, so I'm just like all over it because I'm obsessed with the MAC Fix Plus, like I can't. It's my baby. But guys, this does not beat my MAC. It doesn't. <laughs> Like for me, this is nowhere near the Max, MAC Fix Plus, like, I don't know why people say it's a dupe. I don't find it a dupe at all. I would say that it is okay, it doesn't really make my face as dewy as I would want it to, because my skin is really really dry, so yeah. 
and it has like a weird smell like I don't really like the smell but I don't really mind putting it on my face like the smell is a lot less strong than the Urban Decay sprays but I wouldn't say that it works as well as my MAC Fix Plus and the smell of the MAC one is a lot more better and it just feels a lot more soothing on my skin so like if you guys are on a budget this is an okay product because it's like half of the MAC Fix Plus the price you know so yeah I wouldn't say it is a bad product but I mean I would still buy the MAC one over this so if this one is done I probably won't buy it again this is the Etude House Dear My Enamel Enamel Eyes Talk. This is in the shade PK002 and it is a very, very rosy champagne cream eyeshadow, I would say. The thing about this is that when you swatch it on your hands and everything, it's like really, really glittery and you can definitely feel the chunks of glitter. It's really inexpensive. I believe it was not even over 300 baht. But then like throughout the day, the kind of dewiness and wet look of the eyeshadow goes away so you're just left with like chunks of glitter which is like really really annoying but yeah I mean the first time that you put it on it looks stunning but then throughout the day it's just like chunks of glitter on your eyes which is like it's kind of weird so if you guys don't have eyeshadow underneath this it will look a little bit weird but but it's for me it's just kind of like meh you know like a meh product. Okay, so that is all I have to talk about today. And I hope this video was helpful in any way. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next video.